having a mid-season break in an eight episode season was a terrible idea. I can't be the only one to start this half of the season having totally forgotten what happened last year. It doesn't help that I've watched not only the most disappointing season of TV in a long time, Masters of the Air, and the most impressive, Shogun, in this time since we last left Invincible. Now we're coming back to this story mid plot point and trying to pick up the pieces. It's just such a crazy decision. The theme of this episode is, oh yeah, that happened, didn't it? And a lot of these plot points are pretty side questy, with a lot of them eliciting a so what type response from me. Mark's helping the Thraxians rebuild. His dad's been carted away by the Viltramites. Alan the alien had his life support turned off. Donald is working out that he's a robot. I'm just struggling to care at this point. The previous four episodes were so up and down, and now the thrilling conclusion to these plot lines I don't really care about. This episode feels more like it's catching us up to speed after a break we never should have had. For this reason, I'm giving Invincible Season 2 Episode 5 a 6 out of 10. It's so very ho-hum. Let's get into the spoilers to discuss it. Mark's recuperating after his battle with the Viltramites and it feels like he's healed inside of a week. He's back helping them rebuild their city. His dad's bug woman is handing him the responsibility for his brother as she's going to die before he can speak. Okay, cool. I'm sure they're trying to make this emotional, but I hardly know your bug lady. And what I did know has mostly been forgotten after the intervening four months. The battle between the Guardians of the Globe and Omnipotus was featured in the preview, and it's just as poorly delivered in the episode itself. The slow pan across all of the members of the Guardians and stopping on Immortal saying, no, is just so mundane. Why even show it? The pause before Immortal's line was way too long. Mark brings his half-brother back and basically forces his mum to accept him. No way, that's your problem, brother. Let the government raise half-bug. Luckily, he ages super fast. Donald confronts Cecil about his robotic arm and Cecil shows him that he's actually a brain in a robot body now. There's a lot of filler in this scene. When he says to clear the room, I don't think we needed to see every employee get up from their chair, walk across the room and exit through the door. It feels like they're stalling for time. Mark's on academic probation for not attending classes. I'd forgotten all about his friend slash roommate. Cecil teleports into a dead end hallway. Look at it, there's no doors anywhere. They're slipping up, man. Black Samson saw that Shapesmith was an alien after he lost control of his abilities during the Omnipotus fight. Amber has friends over studying. I didn't know she was friends with Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Oh, and can we talk about this terrible music this show licenses? Damn. The artsy girl with the guitar style really gets a lot of airtime in Invincible. Doesn't help that the subtitles have the lyrics in between the lines of dialogue. Maybe that's why it bothers me so much. Monster Girl is getting annoyed that Rudy is looking out for her. I think he should just leave if they don't appreciate him. A ship from Mars is approaching, but it's full to the brim with biomatter. Like me! Black Samson questions Shapesmith about his relationship to the approaching Martian ship. Shapesmith admits that he knocked out Russ Livingston so he could get away from Mars. So now the Sequids have a host that they can permeate and take over their mind. Rex breaks and enters into Eve's bedroom. Was his plan just to sit there until she went to her room? Do they not have mobile phones? Then they're talking at normal voice levels. If you can't knock on the door, then how come you can talk at regular volumes? I totally thought he was going into her panty drawer. But at least Rex has the sense to give Eve all the validation she needs. Remember the two times you messed up? Well, it turns out you didn't mess up at all. Eve having to deal with the consequences of her actions made her interesting. But we've just undone all of that in a single scene. So Eve is going on the trip to intercept the Mars ship. She can make a suit of armor so she won't be able to be bitten by the Sequids. That makes sense. The spaceship looks weird, almost like it's a painting. Very different from all the other art. I mean, it looks good. It's just odd to see that different style. The Lizard League are attacking some military base for reasons. The Martians fire missiles at the Earth ship and Eve throws a bubble around them. She says she can't hold it for very long. Why? Aren't the atomic changes she makes permanent? She made her treehouse using her powers. That doesn't change back. Or is it only when she does this pink energy stuff? Then why not make a bubble out of the wreckage of the spaceship? I don't know. 
these powers are so inconsistent. So the flying heroes push the bubble to the Martian ship and Eve makes the wall permeable. They appear in a room with Martians in it, but when Bulletproof squishes a Sequid, it alerts the rest of the Sequids to their presence. Why didn't they know they were there? And why would they care? They can't penetrate their skin. King Lizard wants the government to give in to his demands of something or he will blow up a US city. But Shrinking Ray gets in under the door and hits the door opener. Not before making sure to bounce around on the shoulders of every one of the Lizard League's henchmen, women, uh, hench people. Why is Russ Livingston even posing a threat to these heroes? They just need to splat all the sequins. Are they really in danger of being flattened by a wave of them? Aren't they all super strong? Robot has an electromagnetic pulse or something that can knock them out. I never understood duplicate. Why not keep one copy in a safe spot? And she said it herself. I thought these guys were supposed to suck. So why are they dominating these heroes? I mean, Rex isn't even using his exploding powers. Well, too late now because Kate got herself splattered across the room. Seems like this is the scene where they spent this episode's gore budget. Robot has left his suit to make an amplifier for the pulse that disables the sequins. But he needs a couple of minutes and Eve can't hold out that long. Why can't she just take them to another floor? Or between floors? Or in the floor? Again, the powers only work as well as the plot needs them to. Ray finally does what I would have thought her go-to move would be. Shrink, get inside someone and grow. It seems to work well, but when she goes to do it on the big fella, she doesn't shrink to microscopic proportions. She just shrinks down to action figure sizes. Do you want to get caught? But then the big lad just eats her anyway, so she grows. But he's too muscular and he crushes her inside his body. While this is happening, the green lizard chick must just be standing there because she resumes her attack on Rex after Ray is dealt with. Rex cuts her in half with a bomb and then Rex charges up an item and Big Boy eats his hand like a dumbass. Where's Lizard King through all this? Ah, oh, there he is, with his gun, talking about how it's better to be smart than brave. Eve can't hold the bubble and it fails, but the Sequids need a minute to catch their breath, so they just run around in circles instead of attacking. Post credits and Alan is waking up, and he is jacked. Optimus Prime explains to him that he knew that if he could heal on his own, it would make him stronger. Strong enough to defeat a Viltramite, which is exactly what Optimus Prime is. A Viltramite, not strong enough to defeat one, although maybe he is too. Why? Why did you unplug my life support? Well, you see, Alan, we needed a cliffhanger for the mid-season break. Alan needs to bring Invincible back to turn the war against the Viltramites. All in all, a pretty lackluster episode. Lots of moping around, talking about feelings and what people need from each other. And what little action there was was very questionable. It's going to be a 6 out of 10 from me on this one. Too much drama and the action was just stupid or gory for gore's sake. If they have powers, they should be using them. And they should be consistent. If Eve's pink energy powers are so unreliable, why use them? Why not change the atoms around her instead? The Sequids don't feel threatening unless they get back to Earth. So stop them from getting back to Earth. The Lizard League is now super capable against the Guardians of the Globe when before they were incompetent. Again, probably helped by people not using their powers efficiently. I don't know about this show anymore. The mid-season break destroyed what little momentum it had, and to come back with such a lackluster return episode is just ridiculous. They need to do better next episode. We only have three episodes left and we're done, possibly for another two years. Who's going to care by then? Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.